we just saw, the race to produce cleaner energy is charging ahead. In the meantime, demand for cars continues to climb. By 2050, it's predicted there'll be two billion cars on the planet, and fuel consumption will have tripled. To keep pace, we'll have to radically change the way we drive. Here's our next story, driven by design. The automobile came around. In many ways, it was the future. We thought of it as one of the more positive changes that had happened to society. Suddenly, our ability to get a job changed. We can live farther away with bigger plots of land, with better quality of living. It all looked quite good. But there are limitations to swearing by the car. If it gets congested, your quality of life drops immediately. To spend so long in the car, it's very inefficient use of fuel consumption. Things start making sense all of a sudden. It doesn't bring you closer to where you want to get. It actually uh, sometimes brings you farther. The average American spends nearly 300 hours a year in their car, 38 of them stuck in traffic. Annually, congestion consumes over $1 billion in gasoline in the United States alone. The inefficiency caused by traffic, both financial and personal, is enormous. Dirk Sheehan and Carmen White's story is not that unusual today. Dirk works an hour and a half away in Warrenville, Illinois. Generally, he wouldn't leave work until 6 or 6.30, and I would say usual time for him to get home is around 8. Usually when I wake up, I'm the only one up. Sometimes the kids wake up with my routine. More often than that, I don't see them in the morning. I think about my commute when I wake up. I check the traffic report, see if there's any delays. The worst case scenario, it takes me two hours to get to work. We are already so limited in the amount of time he can spend with the kids. And our expenses are, are crazy high. We are spending 400 bucks a month on gas. It takes away from our food budget. And we never paid for gas like that before, ever. There's technology that would allow me to spend less time in the car, spend less money on gas, and spend more time at home. I'd be all for that. The cost of traffic is people's time. It's fuel wasted. It's an emotional toll. It's a frustration. Utilizing the roads more intelligently is a much more efficient approach to the inability to have supply keep up with traffic demand. If you took a satellite picture of the highway, you can see that there's actually a lot of open space. And if we had the technology for cars to drive more closely but safely, then you could increase the utilization of the road network. What this means is that to be more efficient, to use less fuel, we need to see the road differently. We need cars that can navigate through the urban landscape in a radically different way. Maps in the future are going to be able to help people get places either more safely or more efficiently. Today, it just helps you get from point A to point B. But uh, what if I want to get someplace and use the least amount of fuel possible? Or if I've got a hybrid vehicle, I want to make sure I've got plenty of charge, not only get there, but to get back home. So information that is going to help people achieve the more efficient or the safer route is more detailed information about the road than a lot of people realize is possible to collect today. Here in Chicago, Nokia's Location and Commerce Unit is developing the next generation of mapping. LiDAR, sonar, 360-degree video, all are components of what Nokia calls digital mapping. We use 64 lasers that rotate and they collect data in a 3D way uh, about the world. It creates what we call a point cloud of information. That point cloud allows us to measure distances then between uh, the points that we collect. That system combined with the cameras, with higher precision location detection through inertial measurement units, that whole data system allows us to collect 1.3 million points of data per second. Probably within two to three years, you're going to see 3D maps that are going to integrate the traffic information into your routing to help you understand. If I've got five different routes to take, which one is the most efficient today, given the way the stoplights are running, given the way traffic is running? 
All of those factors are going to be taken into consideration to make sure I've got Improving transport efficiency is building cars that drive themselves. Autonomous vehicle technology has a tremendous potential to improve efficiency of our road infrastructure. By removing humans from the equation, we eliminate all the things we do wrong behind the wheel. Speeding, changing lanes too often, merging haphazardly. And by marrying autonomous vehicles with sophisticated 3D maps, we can make driving safer and more energy efficient. generation vehicle is being built right now by the Swedish trucking company Scania. The solution as you see it is that the vehicles can utilize intelligent maps, three-dimensional maps with traffic information. The vehicles will be intelligent and communicate with each other. They will talk to each other, they will talk to the infrastructure. And we will see completely autonomous driven vehicles. The goal was to have multiple robots and see if they could go 60 miles fully autonomously. My name's Helen Taylor. My husband John and I, we're very passionate about fuel economy. Yeah, it's great to break world records, but that's not the be-all and end-all now. It's more important to educate people. Together we're showing drivers around the world simple techniques to improve their fuel efficiency. We run these education programs, get people on the road with us, and we finally tweak their driving techniques. Things like just checking your tyre pressures before you even get into your car. For every one PSI your tyres are underinflated, you're wasting 3% of your fuel efficiency. And the difference between 65 and 75 miles per hour is a saving of 23%. When you talk to the general public, they're very surprised that an energy company like Shell is trying to educate people how to save money, how to reduce CO2 emissions. And here we have Shell sending us around the world to do that. You always hope when you're on this planet that you can make a real difference in people's lives. When you get emails from people saying, I've saved this amount of money this year, now I can put food on the table then you know you are really making a difference. By displaying traffic density in the urban infrastructure in a revolutionary way, 3D digital maps will help create a more fuel-efficient future. But these technologies are limited by the drivers who sit behind the wheel. Some believe that for cars and trucks to be truly energy efficient, they will need to drive themselves. The technology is coming into play through sensors and, uh, and capabilities for cars to drive autonomously. In 2007, the United States Department of Defense held a competition to see if a completely autonomous self-driving vehicle was possible. DARPA stands for the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. They held a competition to develop self-driving robots that could drive themselves in traffic. The goal was to have multiple robots, turn them loose on a course, and see if they could go 60 miles in six hours fully autonomously. Driving may be one of the most complex things we do every day. Drivers make dozens of decisions at any given moment. One study found that drivers were exposed to over 1,300 items of information per minute. We make so many decisions when we're driving without even thinking about it. So in creating our vehicle, a great component of the enterprise was developing software to handle lots of sensors, feeding lots of data, and generating a bunch of potential paths that the vehicle might follow. And even though the robot doesn't have the ability to predict the future, by using this fast random path generation, the robot could anticipate a potential accident and choose a path to avoid it. 
because it's always thinking about what things could the car do next. No one expects millions of cars driving themselves anytime soon. But there is a place where self-navigating technologies are being optimized to create the vehicle of the future. We are on the Scania test track outside Stockholm, where we have basically, it looks like a highway, but it's a separate test track where we conduct our own experiments. Scania, the Swedish trucking company, has recently begun testing its next generation of long-haul truck. Utilizing radar, sonar, and intelligent mapping, they've been able to drastically reduce fuel consumption. We have this example with platooning, where we uh, make use of the re reduction in, in air uh, resistance or air drag that you get from driving close to each other uh, with heavy-duty vehicles. And in order to control this, you need to know where the, the other vehicles are, where their position, their velocity, their actions in the near future and to be very close to the vehicle ahead of you uh, requires that you have very accurate control. If you look at robotics broadly, there's a wonderful set of research on people looking at schooling of fish and, and, and trying to develop the ability for robots to work together like that. So there are wonderful examples from nature of how cooperation can lead to more efficient resource utilization. You can see it when people are competing in Tour de France. They platoon to reduce air drag. They are not bicycling behind each other that close because it's fun uh, or because they are racing. It is because they are reducing air drag sitting behind the man who is leading. A truck traveling 55 miles per hour expends half its energy just to move the air around it. At 65 miles per hour, that number jumps to almost two thirds. Even if platooning can reduce the energy used by 10%, the savings would be substantial. If a vehicle in front of another vehicle wants to brake, it immediately sends out the brake message to the uh, other vehicles. So they actually brake at the same time. The way we do this is by, we have an automated system. So now, for instance, if I take my feet off the acceleration pedal and turn the system on, the velocity is automatically governed by getting information from the vehicle ahead through its wireless system. We want these vehicles to maintain a short relative distance. So through this system, we can reduce the fuel consumption by utilizing the air drag reduction by 10%. And 10% would mean he will be able to save approximately 8,000 euros per single heavy-duty vehicle per year. It may be some time before autonomous vehicles make up the majority of cars on America's highways. Nevertheless, some of these technologies are already making their way into our lives. Now, this polar baby wants to sleep. Do you get to pick out books every day, or is it just something that... I get to put, pick out books sometimes. OK. When we look toward the future, the systems will absolutely make it safer and more efficient and less costly for you, and also make your life easier because you're spending less time on the roads. The city begins to talk, begins to tell you where is their congestion, what's going on in different areas of town. Suddenly, the car becomes a part of a much bigger ecosystem. We can look at how cars interact with other cars, how car interacts with infrastructure, and us, the drivers, can start to make smart decisions about how to move around. Suddenly, mobility becomes a whole other thing. No matter how much money they have, no matter how much oil they have, everybody has to go in a different direction. e 184 is the safest, smartest, and eco-friendly low-altitude autonomous aerial vehicle aiming on providing medium-short distance transportation solution.
early in 2013, Yi Hong started the disruptive and revolutionary plan of making this new generation of autonomous vehicle. This vehicle is set to match three philosophies. Absolute safety by design, automation, and sync flight management platform. In 2011, Yihang's founder and CEO, Hua Zhi's best friend, Chen Ji, deceased from a flight accident. Shortly after, Hua Zhi's helicopter coach also lost his life when a helicopter malfunctioned. Those two accidents erases Hua Zhi's determination of designing an absolute safe aerial vehicle. In 2013, Hua Zhi dropped everything starting from designing bigger motors and augmenting his flight control system. In 2014, Guangzhou Yihang was founded and commercialized the Ghost Drone 1.0 as a consumer product. And at the same time, Yihang 184 project continues with a reunion with his alumni and old buddies in the industry. Yihang established its core engineering team associated with Yihang 184 AAV. That included Sun Xun and Liu Renping, whom Hua Zhi worked together back in 2005 and built the first coaxial double rotor helicopter in China. This is how we started. This is the uncultivated land that we use for test flights. During the raining season, we can only fly inside. Sometimes we test the AV in the dark of the nights. It doesn't always go with what you expected. We took the data, analyzed the root cause, and get back to flying once more. The journey of Yihang 184 is paved with obstacles, but we keep making unremitting endeavors to successfully achieve the design KPI of prototype during the test flights. And this leads to the official project kickoff of Yihang 184 AEV. Yihang designed and developed our own propeller dynamic testing system. This is how we have done it. Yihang attracted the best talents. To work on structural design, industrial modeling design, and manufacturing, delivered by top composite material team, all part of Yihang 184 are designed and produced by ourselves. Here comes the official testing for Yihang 184 chassis. Group of engineers on site, troubleshooting and reload. We have the application designed for Yihang 184. After setting up the flight plan with a single click, user can take off on any location, sit, relax, and enjoy the flight. Yihang will always keep in mind of its humble beginning. Put our heart and soul with the products we build. Absolute safety by design, automation, and sync flight management platform. You have our word. Once we begin, we will never give up.